So I got a question. Is the army getting soft? See, every generation always says that, that their generation is better than the generations that are coming. We hear that with our fathers. We hear that in different generations of soldiers too. If you join the army in the 50s, you would say your generation is better than the ones that join after you. And we hear it today. So is the army getting softer? Depends on who you ask, really. Now, what I'm about to tell you in this video is my own opinion. I want to hear your opinion as well. Put it in the comments down below. But remember, go easy. Because opinions, you know what they say about them. They're like assholes. Everybody's got them. But not everybody wants to hear them. So as I think about is the army getting softer, I got to look at different aspects of today's army. You get the physical fitness, you have the training structure in basic training, you have the standards on how the soldiers join today as far as entry level standards, main maintaining the regular standards. And obviously we got to talk about diversity and inclusion. Those are the three aspects I want to look into as far as trying to answer the question, is the army getting soft? Let's look at the aspects of physical fitness. Is it a new standard? Is it stepping back from the old physical fitness that we're used to, which is a two mile run, two minute sit ups and two minute push ups? Or is it a necessary change? I've been in both because the ACFT is fairly new. I can tell you this much though, in the old physical fitness standards, which is the APFT, that was easier to max out. Depending on age and gender, for me at least it was easy to max out for the most part it was the run that was getting to a lot of people if you're a runner you're normally a little skinnier and you don't have a lot of muscle mass so which means you can run faster and longer also in turn helps you with your sit-ups and your push-ups because when you're doing push-ups and you're lighter it's 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 easier now when they introduced the army acft or the acft that is hard to max out because it's a balance of strength, endurance, and speed. They're easy to pass, but hard to max out. Look at the deadlifts, for example. I can't max a deadlift. I can get close to max, but I can't max out the deadlift because you got to train for the deadlifts and so on and so forth. The sprint, drag, and carry, you'll be on the ground as soon as you finish that event. So is it a necessary change? Why did the army change? Because a lot of people are getting hurt. So apparently there's studies that shown that this series of events, the way you train for these new events, helps you better as far as recovery and prevents injury. Is it true? Maybe, maybe not. But does that mean that the army is getting softer? Or is it an advancement? Is it because we knew a lot more about our troops, about the current composition of our bodies? There's a lot more science involved that they were able to change it, even though it cost a lot more money to implement. What do you think? Well, that alone can't really answer if the army's gone soft. Now, let's look at the new tape. So taping in the army, if you pass the height and weight threshold, you need to be taped to determine your body fat. Back in the day, there's two measurements. They measure your neck, the circumference of your neck, and your waist. Now, it's very controversial because I'm pretty sure I've seen big soldiers pass this test, the tape test. As long as you get a big neck, you're going to pass it. So I've seen people with big beer bellies, but they got a huge neck, and they still pass. And what is the purpose of the tape test anyway? Is to maintain the military look, the professional appearance of a soldier. I'm pretty sure you've seen bigger soldiers in this, on the streets walking around. And you think to yourself, how the heck is he in the army? So when it comes to the new tape test, I tell you, they only measure your belly. <laughs> but imagine now you have to really make sure that you have somewhat of a tapered appearance on your midsection. Does he create a better soldier look? Probably. 
Is it harder to maintain? Absolutely. So now I'll introduce the question again. Is the army getting softer or is the army improving? If that aspect didn't answer the question, how about basic training? Are the standards in basic training getting soft or is a new reality? Ooh, that's pretty deep. Let me rephrase it. Are the standards softening up or is it a new way of doing things to cater to the new generation? A lot of you commented that it gotten softer. I would ask how, because the structure of basic combat training is the same. From generation after generation, you go through different phases. First phase, whether it's red, blue, yellow, or pink. For us, it was red. It's probably the toughest part. This is where you get indoctrinated at the army way of doing things. If the structure stays the same, how is it softer? Okay, maybe it's not the structure. Maybe it's the way we treat our soldiers in basic training, perhaps. Or has the army learned through the years how to treat people better? Yes, I agree that if you inflict pain and suffering, they will remember and they will not do stuff. For example, telling your kid not to touch the stove and they touch the stove and they'll never touch the stove again once they get burned. That's the most basic principle of teaching. However, is there a better way of teaching? Something that will last longer. Something that is repeatable, that they can pass along for the next generation. And then they're going to say that their generation is better than the next. These are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves before we say that the army is getting softer. I'm going to post in a link in the description below of a documentary about the Drill Sergeant Academy, how to train the new drill sergeants because it molds the, new, the future leaders of our army. And their doctrine emphasizing being professional. If they weren't professionals before, then it emphasizes being more professional to add humanity in the way they train soldiers. Long story short, to add the why, because studies have shown that the why is probably the most important motivator when things go sideways. Let's go back to the question, is the army getting softer in basic training? I don't know. How about the standards? So now, when you enlist in the army before you go to basic training, they kind of give you a little bit of leeway when it comes your your body weight, your height and weight. Does that mean that the army gone soft? Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Because that program only is applicable before they join in the first few months after they sign their enlistment contract. They don't go to basic training right away. Well, depends. <laughs> if they're within the threshold of 2%, they can go to basic training and they get monitored week by week on their progress or lack thereof. But the goal of the basic training is still the same that they have to produce qualified ready and trained soldiers after graduation now the question is if they allow soldiers to graduate basic training and still doesn't meet the standards then yeah sure maybe the arm is getting softer but i have no data to prove that that's what's going on yes you can join a little bit bigger but by the time you graduate basic training you still are in the same standards as everybody else. So is the army getting softer? Again, depending who you ask. Let's look at the last aspect, the diversity and inclusion. We're in, there's a lot of changes in policy where soldiers are allowed to be whatever they want to be, for the lack of a better term. I would say that the soldier has gone soft only if those soldiers that fall in that category does not meet the standards and still are able to stay in the army because of inclusion and diversity. I mean, these are common sense, guys. What does your race and gender have to do with your ability to do your job as a soldier in the army? Or maybe the better question when it comes to diversity is that, has the army again learned from his past experiences? I've seen this comment a lot. That's why I'm making a video about it. Has the army gone soft? Here are my thoughts on this. I don't think the army has gone soft. The army has evolved. 
And for any organization to survive, withstand through time, it has to evolve. It has to know its market. It has to understand its capabilities. It has to understand the strength and the weaknesses and utilize that and capitalize on it and use it as an opportunity. This question about is the army getting soft sits solely on the current leaders we have today. So if you're a leader in the army, this is on you. Stay new so you can learn a lot more. Thanks for watching. This is the High Speed FNG. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can make more videos like this. Catch you later.